In the early hours of May 3rd, 1942, the body of a 40-year-old woman is found partially naked, badly beaten and strangled in Albert Park, Melbourne. She is found to be in possession of a purse, which indicates that the nature of the crime is not a robbery, and at a time where the city of Melbourne is in war and implements a brownout or low-light policy, the homogenous Australian people fear that the enemy is now on home soil. The crime becomes known as a brownout crime, the very first of a series of murders. It's Psycho Sunday, and tonight, I'm joined by special guest Four Warnings, and we're going to introduce to you Edward Leonsky, the brownout killer. As a British colony, Australia is forced to enter World War II as Nazi Germany declares war by invading Poland. Australian Prime Minister John Curtin sends every abled man to fight in Europe after receiving assurance that the British naval base in Singapore will repel attacks on Japan and Thailand and defend Australia. Because of the draw on resources from World War I, Australia is unprepared for war and the British seize control of our armed forces. The Japanese had previously declared their neutrality to the British swearing not to attack Great Britain or its colonial empire. But on February 19th, 1942, 242 Japanese aircraft attacked Darwin, the defence capital of Australia, and sent the defenceless Australian people into nationwide panic. Japan are aggressively seeking to expand the territory and have already conquered neighbouring countries within weeks. Australia has no time to prepare for the incoming invasion. Oil fuel tanks are targeted, railway yards are destroyed, and their shores are left open causing every able man and woman to fight off armed men on the shores of Darwin. And after being left to fend for themselves by the British, Australia turns to their newest ally, the United States, to help them defend their homeland. The United States responds and send 15,000 troops to Camp Pell, a sprawling American tent city in Royal Park in Melbourne after the attacks on Pearl Harbor. The American troops brought long-needed protection and solitude to the citizens of Melbourne as the United States could not risk losing its closest ally to Japan. Americans are welcomed into the city with open arms and bring with them trappings of a developing consumer culture. Jazz music, chocolate bars, nylon stockings, and other luxuries scarcely known by locals. Within months, the long-admired Americans are embraced by the Australian people tenfold in what was the largest single migration in Australia's history. Americans and Australians assimilate due to their similarities in language, history, and stance for democracy. But a major blow would jeopardize the newly founded bond between our two great nations, one that would truly test our friendship. Ivy McLeod's beaten body is found murdered in the doorway of a shop next to the Bleak House Hotel, Albert Park. Her genitals are exposed, but is not sexually assaulted. Dubbed the brownout crime by media, a panic spreads across Melbourne for the first time since the Darwin bombings. The markings on her body indicate that the killer has large hands and considerable strength. Hundreds of leads are reported to the police, but of the many, one stands out to the investigators Witnesses in the area of a tram stop at Albert Park recall seeing the victim in the company of a young man wearing an American uniform. Albert Park is just nine k's or five and a half miles away from Camp Pell, the US Army base. McLeod had recently separated from her husband after suffering many years of isolation and abuse. She was reinventing herself and seeking long lost happiness once again, but sadly, Ivan McLeod's life was cut short. Australian police advised the U.S. Army of the eyewitness testimonies, and the Army officials conduct an internal investigation to help determine if an American citizen is involved. Each man is questioned and asked to give an alibi of their whereabouts on the night of the murder. The information is overwhelming, and the process tedious. Six days later, on May 9th, Pauline Thompson, an out-of-town singer, is found murdered outside a city boarding house. She is killed in the same manner as Ivy McLeod. Patrons and co-workers from the venue Thompson performed at recall Pauline drinking with a blonde man with a charming smile at the bar after her performance before leaving with him. The public are now gasping in fear 
and now demand that the wartime reduction of lighting be lifted in a series of protests and letters to the mayor, fearing that the killer will strike again. The mayor reassures the public and restores calm to the masses until May 18th, just nine days later. The third victim, Gladys Hosking, is found dead in Royal Park, right by the US Army base of Camp Pell. She is found in a muddy trench and is murdered in the same way as the previous two victims. A US soldier discovers the body and investigators attend the scene. They reach out to the public in hopes that someone can assist with their investigation. And just days later, police receive two witness statements. One reports that a disheveled American man had approached her asking for directions, seemingly out of breath and covered with mud the night of the murder. And Australian soldier Neil Seymour reports that he encountered a US soldier, 24-year-old private Edward Leonsky, who was covered in mud and asked him for directions back to Camp Pell, also on the night of the murder. The US Army locked down Camp Pell. No personnel are required to check in and not leave the base until released. And the search is on for any clues that might help Australian investigators. Leonsky's tent is searched and officials find a distinctive yellow clay from the site of the Hosking killing, just outside the camp. Another U.S. soldier comes forward and reports that Leonsky had confided in him on May 10th. He tells superiors that Leonsky, who was in a drunken state, confessed to killing two women, but without hard evidence, the soldier did not report the confession prior. Born on December 12, 1917, in Kenville, New Jersey, he is the sixth child of Russian-born parents John and Amelia Leonsky. The family moved to New York during Edward's infancy, where he would leave junior high school in 1933, take up a secretarial course, and finish in the top 10% of his class. In his spare time, he was a bodybuilder and boxer. Fair-haired and of middle height, Leonsky was powerfully built, boyish in appearance, and cheerful in demeanor. He held several clerical jobs before working for Gristied supermarkets. When called up for military service on February 17, 1941, he left a mentally unstable mother, two brothers with prison records, and a third in a psychiatric hospital. While stationed within the 52nd Signal Battalion in San Antonio, Texas, Leonsky began to drink heavily, preferring concoctions such as whiskey laced with hot peppers. He displayed his strength by vaulting onto bar counters and walking along them on his hands. About this time, he attacked a woman in the street and attempted to strangle her before being pried off. Local authorities did not charge Leonsky with the assault, and as a result, the U.S. Army were not advised of the attack. So Leonsky was sent to Australia with the battalion. The U.S. Army hand over Private Edward Leonsky to Australian authorities, allowing them to complete their investigation. Australian detectives collate their crimes to find a shocking connection. The descriptions given by witnesses to the three murders bear striking resemblances to the string of survivors of recent attacks. Police strongly suspect that the assailant is a US soldier, but don't have enough evidence to lay charges, so they call on the survivors and other witnesses to help identify the suspect in a lineup of American servicemen who are stationed in Melbourne. Each witness picks Edward Leonsky out of the lineups. Police now know they have their man, but sensitive to relations with its American ally, the government decides after consultation with Britain and in the face of some strenuous opposition that Leonsky can be tried by a United States court martial. The trial is convened by the US military and Leonsky is convicted and sentenced to death. It is the first time that any person has ever been tried in Australia by a military tribunal for a crime which violates civilian law. During the trial, evidence is presented which indicates that Leonsky had possible dual personalities. US Private Mitchell Cappy tells the court, when Leonsky gets drunk, his voice changes. He talks more like a girl, says stuff about poltergeists, werewolves, demons, creepy stuff, talks to himself a lot. Other times, it's like he was talking to somebody else. Following some dispute, he is declared sane 
and is tried and found guilty on July 17th. He gives no explanation for his crimes other than to say of one of his victims, I wanted that voice. I choked her. In the past, Edward Leonsky has boasted of an alter ego called Buddy and claimed that it was he who had committed the crimes. But the truth behind his brutal murders remained a mystery as he was convicted and sentenced to death by hanging at Penridge Prison. The relations between the US and Australia are ironclad to this day due to the shared commitment to justice and common goal towards world peace. That brings us to the end of the video. I'd like to give a special thank you to Four Warnies for helping out with this video. Make sure you go check her channel out and give her a sub. She's a very talented voice actor, not just with horror stories and narrations, but with anything you can throw at her. So make sure that you give her a sub, check her channel out, and follow her on Twitter. So let me know what you thought in this video below. Leave me a comment, give it a like if you liked it. And I'll see you guys next week for Spooky Sunday.